Hey everyone, welcome back to Code in Motion. Today we're looking at leak code problem number 371, sum of two integers. This problem is interesting because we're supposed to sum up two integers, but we're not allowed to use the positive and negative operators. And so how do we do this? Well, the trick is we're supposed to use bitwise operations. Now let's actually get started with an example. So I wanna add up three and five. So in this case, I'll call A is equal to three and B is equal to five. And let's see how we sum this up in binary. Okay, so three is zero, zero, one, one, five is zero, one, zero, one. And if you're confused, you can reference the table on the right. Now, in order to sum this up, I'm gonna go back to like the third grade of how we used to do math, even in decimal form. And let's start all the way on the right hand side. So I wanna add one and one. In binary, one plus one is 10, right? So I'm going to have sum be zero and I need to carry the one to the next column, right? That's, this is kind of how we did math in decimal notation as well. So we have a zero for the sum and then we carry the one um, to the next column on the left. Now we need to add up the next bit, right? So it's one plus one, uh, which is 10 again. And we put zero at the sum and we carry one once again to the left column. Now we sum up the next left column. In this case, we have carry, which is one, a is zero, b is one, so one plus one, once again, is 10. So we put zero and we carry one, and then finally, one plus zero plus zero is just one, so we don't have a carry, and we're finished the sum. In this case, one, zero, zero, zero is eight, and so three plus five is eight, and this is how we sum up two binary numbers. Now, we're not allowed to use the positive or negative operations. We need to use bitwise operations. And so I really want to analyze the carry and the sum over here to see if these are common bitwise operators. And so the first observation that I want to make is relating to the sum. The sum is if we have a zero and a zero, the result for the sum is zero. If we have a one and a zero, the result is a one. But if we had a one plus one, the sum was actually zero. Remember that one plus one is 10 but we carried the one to the next column. And so the sum was zero, the carry was one. And so what bitwise operator is this? This is actually the exclusive or, right? Zero X or zero is zero. One X or zero is one. One X or one is zero also. So sum is the X or operator. Now let's look at the carry. For the carry, if we had zero plus zero, there was no carry. 1 plus 0, there was no carry, so 0. However, if we had 1 plus 1, the carry was 1. And so the carry is the AND operator shifted to the left by 1, right? Because 0 and 0 is 0, 1 and 0 is 0, 1 and 1 is 1. But the carry always goes to the left column, right? We always shift it over by 1. It gets carried over to the left. And so we have to bitwise shift by 1 as well on top of that. And so with these observations, let's actually see how we could go to the main algorithm. And so what I'm going to do is recursively sum until my carry is zero, until, until there's nothing left to add. So let's start out with the same problem. A is three, B is five. And let's perform these bitwise operations. So let's start with the rightmost bit over here, one and one. So carry is going to be one. And the sum is going to be zero, right? Because carry is and, and sum is XOR. So one XOR one is zero, one and one is one. Now we go on to the, to the left column. One and zero is zero, so carry is going to be zero. One XOR zero is one, so sum is going to be one. Same thing for the next column, zero and one is going to be one for the sum, zero for the carry. And then finally, zero and zero is zero, zero XOR zero is zero as well. And so now we have a sum of 0, 1, 1, 0, and a carry of 0, 0, 0, 1. But remember, we need to shift the carry, right? The carry shouldn't belong in this column. It goes to the next column. And so before we're done over here, we need to shift the carry to the left by 1. So now we have 0, 0, 1, 0. Now we're going to set A equal to the current sum, so 0, 1, 1, 0. And we're going to set B to the carry. And we're going to do this process again. We're going to keep going until B is equal to 0. Okay, it means that there's no more carry left. So let's start this process again. And we're going to start at the rightmost side. So 0 and 0 is 0. 0 x or 0 is 0. 1 and 1 is 1. So carry is going to be 1. But sum is 0 because 1 x or 1 is 0. 
and we continue this process uh, for this column as well, and the last column, which is 0, 0, and this is going to be 0 for both. Now we shift the carry to the left by 1, and A is going to be equal to the sum, and B is going to be equal to the carry. So A is now going to be 0, 1, 0, 0, B is going to be 0, 1, 0, 0. And we're going to do the same exact thing for this iteration. Carry is AND, sum is exclusive OR. For the 1-1 one, one case, carry is going to be 1. And for the last one, we have 0 for both. Now we shift the carry to the left by 1. And we set A equal to the sum and B equal to the carry. All right, so we start all the way on the right. This is going to be zeros across the board besides the last, um, the last element on the left. So zero over here. And zero um, and one is going to be one for the sum, zero for the carry. And now we shift the carry to the left by one. It's still zero in this case. Nothing happens. And we assign A to the sum and B to the carry. But there's no reason to continue anymore, right? The sum is eight. B is going to be the carry, which is zero. But if you have a zero carry, you're effectively done the algorithm. And so we're left with the final sum of eight. The time complexity over here is O of 32 because an integer has 32 bits. So at most, we're going to run through this algorithm 32 times. And that's just constant time. And space is constant because we're not storing anything. Before we code out the solution, I just want to go over a conceptual overview for why Python treats integers differently. In the coding implementation, we'll have to use a mask and bitwise operators, and so I just want to show the reason for that. So Python has no limit on the integer size. Traditional languages like Java and C++, they use 32 bits for an integer, but Python does not. Python actually has this concept of an infinite number. They use however many bits as you need for an integer. And so what I want to look at is an example of how we're going to use a mask to get around this for using 32 bits. But this, in this example, let's just assume that an integer is 4 bits instead of 32 bits, just to make the concept simpler. So if we have the number 10 in Python, that's 1010. Python will actually add an infinite number of zeros before uh, 1010. And if we want to limit this to 4 bits or 32 bits, we need to use the concept of a mask. In this case, I'm going to use a mask of 4 bits in order to get the bits that we care about. So what the mask does is it constrains the integer to only use the amount of bits um, that you desire. In this case, I'm going to use 1111 for 4 bits, but if this was 32 bits, we'd be using uh, 32 ones. And what we're going to do is AND the number with the mask, and what we're left with is just the bits that we care about. Okay, so this is concept number one. Now I want to talk about a second concept in Python. So Python assumes an unsigned integer, okay? And so on the right-hand side, I have the unsigned table for four bits. It goes through zero to 15. But normally for integers, we have them signed, right? So let's look at how signed integers would look like for four bits. Instead of zero to 15, we have negative eight to seven. And so you'll realize over here is that anytime you have a leading one in the leftmost bit, that means you're a negative number in two's complement. And so in Python, if we have 1010 as our integer, this could either be negative 6 if you're looking at the signed uh, table, or it could be 10 in the unsigned world. Well, for this problem, we're interested in signed integers. And so Python treats a leading one for 32-bit numbers as an unsigned integer, so as a positive-only integer. What we need to do is convert that uh, to a signed integer. So the first thing we're going to do is first use the mask, uh, like we looked at earlier, and we're going to XOR the integer with the mask. What this is going to do is flip all the bits. So if you XOR a number by a mask of all ones, you flip all the bits. Now Python actually has a two's complement operator, uh, the tilde, and the tilde is equal to minus X minus one. This effectively performs the two's complement and forces Python to look at the new number as a negative number or a positive number, right? And so what we're going to do is reflip all these bits, but tell Python to treat it as a negative. And so if we take 
uh, the two's complement of 0, 1, 0, 1, we get 1, 0, 1, 0, but now Python looks at this as a negative 6 instead of a positive 10. And this is the concept we're going to use in the coding implementation. So we're going to return integer if the integer is less than or equal to the max integer, the max 32-bit integer, else we're going to return the two's complement of the integer XORed with the mask. So we're flipping the bits, integer XOR mask is flipping all the bits, and then the tilde is reflipping the bits with two's complement. All right, so let's actually code this solution now. The first thing we're going to do is define a mask, and I'm going to define this in hexadecimal just because it's easier to define this instead of writing 32 ones. I'm just going to write eight F's over here. So F, 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 and this is a 32 bit mask of 32 ones. Now the max integer that you can have in the 32 bit signed integer is two to the 31 minus one. So we're going to keep track of that max int as a variable. And now we're going to start the main algorithm. So while B does not equal zero because B is the carry, right? We're going to say that the sum, the sum is the XOR operator, right? So sum is a X or B, and we have to end it with the mask to keep it contained. Let me just put an equals over there. And the carry is equal to a and B and mask. Okay. Now we're going to set a to the sum and we're going to set B to the carry, but we need to shift it over one, right? So we shift it one to the left. And then now we're going to return a because we store the final sum in a if a is less than or equal to the max integer else if it's greater than the max integer that's because python is treating it as a 32-bit unsigned integer we need to take the two's complement of a x or mask and so it looks kind of funky but i explained before how we're inverting the bits over here a x or mask and then we're re-inverting them but telling Python to treat this as a negative value using the two's complement. And so let's run this and verify that it succeeds. And there we have it. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in more LeetCode content, especially the Blind 75 list, be sure to subscribe and like the video down below, and I'll see you in the next one.